And welcome in there, guys. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you enjoyed that game. Cavalry FC on the road at Forge FC. You know, it wasn't a bad result. It wasn't a bad game at all. I was I was impressed with a few things with the team. The new players, the way we held the game, the way we held the ball, the way we literally controlled the game, most of it. Because honestly, a few times we've been on that field, we didn't look that good. Anyway, before we get to the game, I'm going to be saying hello to a lot of people that I've missed since the, the end of last season. And uh, I'll tell you what, I've had a lot of fun at soccer grounds all around the world, but none more than what I had with Cavalry FC fans, Foot Soldiers, 109, 203, Tertia, obviously 109, Sean, obviously, Mr. Sean Clark, big Foot Soldiers as well, Stewie, I know Stewie as well, David Powell, Dale Farmer, Ilara Jack, Brad Anderson, Josh Anderson, all you guys are going to get a nod because I love all you. It's been fantastic to meet you. So we're going to talk about that as we get through. But one of the sad things is that I wanted to bring a really big opening day show for you. And I watched the game just like you. I've got the game notes. I'm going to go through some of that stuff right after this, right? Okay, no problem there. And we won't take all day getting there because we're not going to keep you here. But when I come on the camera talking Cavalry FC from now on, from before, you know I'm talking sense and it's stuff that you need to know. Now, something happened down in Hamilton that got a few of us in the media here in Calgary quite irate. In fact, pretty pissed off. I'd say pretty pissed off. Just one second. Get right back. But pretty pissed off. Pretty pissed off being, uh, you know, one way of putting it. I'm going to put this uh, pitch up. It's going up now. This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve. Now, we sat there for a good 20 minutes, and I tell you what, if you look upstairs, you can see all the names up there. They're good people, waited good amount of time, and I was the first one waiting. I know when you get into a press conference situation on the road and you're not on site and you're online, you better get in line fast. So I always try to be the guy that gets the early worm or the one that's in first in line. And in this case, you can see right up there, I'm first in line. You're like, why is your hand in the air, Steve? I'll explain. All of the media waited. And when I say waited, this is what happened. Bobby Shmooniotis came through, talked to the game. Took a fair amount of time. These guys in front of us, on the, on the floor, they waited until the people online had asked their questions. Not a problem. We're talking the big media, right? You know, like one soccer doing their direct questioning, etc., what have you. And then it goes to the floor like it does at every press conference. And it does that at Cavalry FC first. Obviously, one soccer get their questions in. Then people like me on Ultimate Soccer, we get our questions time on the floor, just like any press conference. So setting it up, Bobby Shmooniotis and one player from Hamilton have gone through, done their bit. Fantastic. The sound was terrible, by the way. I don't know what kind of microphone system they're using, but it's, it's really a bad system. Now, after that, it was about a 10 minute delay before Tommy came to the podium. And it's actually a table, as you can see, but Bobby Shmooniotis had a podium. Tommy had a table and chairs, and Mikhail Kantavi is sitting right next to him, as you can see. 10 minute delay, but obviously they had things to do and they were in a happy mood and, you know, things to say. And team comes first, press must wait. Not a big deal. That's the way it is. So Tommy gets there, Mikhail gets there. We can hear them talking. And like I say, the sound is really atrocious, but you can make out what they're saying. Then, after about 10 minutes, which is normal, the guys online have finished their questioning through the TV stations, etc., etc. The, the guys on the floor have done theirs, and now it's handed to people like us before it goes back to the floor normally. Then came up a sign on the screen that nobody got to, to see, but lucky because I can screenshot on the fly, I screenshot this picture. About a minute before the end of the press conference from the Hamilton media, and this came from the Hamilton media, they said, can you all... Get off the line. There's six more people waiting. And I said to myself, you want me to click off now after waiting 20 minutes? I'm like, you must be mad. So I decided not to get offline. And Todd as well from Calgary also decided not to get offline as well. And we're both sitting there like looking straight in the camera to show that we're not, not really impressed. We're looking at the camera like. And as you can see in that little picture up there, I've actually got my hand up going, what the hell? Sorry for shouting, but a case of 
we would have brought you more information. We would have been able to pr promote this game far better had we been able to get our questions off to Tommy and Mikiel and bring you some more information. But none of us were allowed to get a question off, and we were cut off right at the end, without excuse, without reason. And I I'll tell you what, I find that absolutely horrendous. In all the years I've been in the media, that has never happened often. With Cavalry FC, it's happened twice. Somebody needs to ask a question to one soccer as to what they want to do. Do they want to promote this league? Do they want to promote the clubs? Or do they want to enrage and outrage the media? Because if you outrage the media, they'll still report on you, but they won't do a good job. And some of them will stop doing it. Tell you what, man, big mistake by Hamilton Media today, but you enraged, you outraged a lot of people in the Calgary media. So just thought you guys would like to hear that because you never get to see that, right? You're never really in the same spot to hear that ever, 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 right? So there's something for you. Now let's talk about the game and some of the good stuff. Okay, guys, the game itself, I tell you what, I was really impressed with how Calgary held their form, the frame, and the lines through the game. I was really, really impressed. Got to say hello to Liam Blankenstein, Conrad Wood. A couple more. Wait a minute, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. Gareth Smith Doyle, Craig McTavish, Johnny Orange Blankenstein, the Dutchman, Chris Wood, Nicky Brown, Willie Zombardo, Shannon O'Boyle, Matthew Brosso, two more, Ian Racine. Hello, Ian. And Michael Jarzecki. Right, so the game itself. I thought we were actually in a good frame i thought we held our our lines well we operated through the game pretty good we literally dominated a lot of the play and we held our own we didn't look like we were getting dominated like sometimes you know forge over the last few years they they literally put their hands on you and then they smother you and before you know it you can't really get in the game so this was not one of them games i think we fared well now on a couple of the uh, the things i'm looking at for for, uh, for instance during the game the highlight points 35th minute the 1-0 goal, I'll tell you what, Ali Muli, Ali Musi, sorry, Ali Musi, the cross was then helped on by yours truly, that super little guy in the middle, Joe Mason, and then spectacular Maya Bevin, athleticism that gets it in past Henry. I'll tell you what, Henry can't be happy with that goal, but a great finish. And when, when we scored that goal, I'll tell you what, I was jumping up and down. I was so jumping up and down. I was like, yes! Oh yeah, and I had to, I had to watch myself because like there's a few people around as well, you know, some people do work here yeah and um i'm thinking this is magic and it's like you know 10 minutes before half time we could have this one could have this one but then 39 minutes in and hamilton scores and you gotta say yeah fair dues fair dues marco was a bit late and uh, hamilton goes over him he, he he needed that and tucks in a penalty pretty good so one apiece at half time no big deal it was it's fair dues and gotta say though before half time Maya Bevan, lucky not to be sent off here. When he closed, he put the clothesline on Henry in goal. I tell you what, if that referee had a scene proper, I think Maya might have been sent off. In fact, I guarantee you, if we had VAR, ooh, bad, shh. But if we had VAR, I reckon he'd be off. I reckon he'd be off guaranteed, guys, because I tell you now, he clotheslined Henry. And I tell you what, it really wasn't for any reason. But anyway, half time, one apiece. Things are looking good. The only two things of real interest was that second half, Mikhail Kintavi, he struck a ball that I tell you what, is the sweetest thing you'll ever see in your lives. And here's the funny thing, believe me or not, but you should, because I don't lie to nobody. There's no reason to lie to anybody, because if you lie, you lie to yourself. I don't lie to myself. I don't lie to anybody. Never have done. But here's the deal. When that ball came across to Mikhail Kintavi, I'm like, oh yes, hit it! because it was so lined up for that right foot to go bang. And did he ever smack that? I mean, Henry watched that go straight past him and went, there's no chance I'm picking that up. And then you've got to give them credit though, Forge. They don't give up and they always seem to have something in, you know, in reserve or they have an answer or they get back on you or you never walk out with the three points that you probably think you should do, like we could have done. But uh, you got to say, Johan Jensen, sorry, Noah Jensen, um, nice little finish off what really... That situation should have been cleared before it even got there. They should never have even got into that situation. So call that a bit of a defensive breakdown within the transition of that move. A fortuitous touch off the head. And then literally when it comes through on the floor. Yeah. 
Jensen's really got a good, sweet shot. Right foot, bang it, he goes. And again, Marco has no chance on that. So, Captain Carducci, not a chance. But uh, let's talk about some of the things that are good on the day. I'll tell you what, there's some really good things that came through today. One of the things is that uh, Fraser Ed got six minutes of play. Now, he hasn't been around long. He has not been around long. And it's really nice to see him get in. Jesse Daly, young kid in, he gets 34 minutes as well. So there's good signs here, yeah? Other guys that we got coming through got time as well. So put it this way, for on the road, a 2-2 draw against Forge, we have took a point out of their building. We could quite easily have gone there and come back with nothing. Quite frankly, when I was thinking about this game all week long, I was thinking, you know, it would be nice to get something, but I don't know if we will or not. And I'm thinking, ah, it's the nemesis. It's the forge it's a case of we might well lose but i don't give up but eventually when this game came through i tell you what after 15 minutes just to culminate this i said you know we're looking good we're looking strong in this game and i think we're going to get something and you know what we did and we deserve to get something and we really did play a real top road game and i think when you give it a couple of weeks to let these guys gel together from what I've seen from the games so far, the first game obviously was Ottawa and Halifax Wanderers won a piece. That was a blinding game. Oli Barrett got the man of the match. Fantastic, fantastic player. And Fernandez got the replay goal, won a piece. But the more I look at this team and think about the next few games, two against Pacific on the road, obviously next one Pacific on the road in the Canadian Championship, then after that the, the uh, Premier League. But the more I look at the team, the more I think these guys are going to gel well. And I think we've got a team that's really... I'm looking forward to this season. I think that we're moving in the right direction. And I think what I saw today is promising. I'm not saying we're winning the title just yet. But what I'm saying is, I think we're in for a decent season again. Now, don't forget, next game coming up is Canadian Championship coming up in the week. Against Pacific FC. But I'll tell you what, like I said on the head there, they better not get in the habit of abusing the media on the road by the home press not playing fair. Because what happened today down there in Hamilton, it really did piss off a lot of the Cavalry and the Calgary media. And you can't keep doing that because eventually they'll stop coming. I know. I've seen the media go, you can keep your soccer. I've had it. And I've been the only one there. I've been to press conferences in the past for Canadian soccer and I've been the only guy in the press conference, at the press conference. Earl Cochran, the guy who runs Canadian soccer right now, I know like that. You go back years with me, Earl. And I remember me and you being at a press conference in Edmonton for Ca Canada versus Germany, the women's world champions of the time, yeah? And there was just me from the soccer. And that was it. There were no other soccer media there period so that was because there was nothing in it for the media to get around them there was no money the csa wasn't paying any good advertising fees at the time so the media went you can keep it i was there because i love the game and i want to promote the game at the time and i'm still promoting the game but that's why i was there it's out of love out of pride out of respect and out of wanting to grow the game i'm like one of the grandfathers that wants to grow the game all the way through don't piss off the media. They won't come back. Anyway, get ready for the next game. That was a good point on the road. I'm really happy about it. And I'm thinking we're in for a good year. And I'm going to rattle off some people's names here. Stewie Wallinson, Carden Dalter, David Kent, Percy Willens, John Leung, Nicholas Morgan, Braden Connect, Mohamed Yeah, Sean Livermore, Kurt Weisner, and Mark. I'll tell you, I know Mark Weisner as well. Uh, up to you, Mark. Aya Ayaka, Matt Smith, Gabriel Bichara, Michael Elder, Jenny Stelic, Joel Hildebrecht, Anthony Gravel, Nina AT, Rebecca Lynn, Jeff Clemens, Raj Dial. Did I say Dawson Connect? I did, yes, absolutely. And last couple of guys, Richard Lewis, Jerry Holt, Brad Wallace, Dane Ewan, Kerry Lynn Ulyot, and Paul Pietrovsky. If I've missed anybody, you have rights to come up to me at the first game at home and go, Steve! 
Did you forget me? And I'll make sure I remember you on the next show. Guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy it. we got one point in the bag already. Things are looking good. Enjoy the weekend. It's getting better. And I'm looking forward to the Canadian Championship next game. If you look down below at the library, there's a show on the Canadian Championship from a few days ago. It tells you everything you need to know. Tertia, I'll be in, I'll be in touch. Big up to everybody. Everybody have a great day and go Cavs, go. Cheers. This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve. This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve.